Salzburg today in this beautiful rainy day. We are here to introduce you today to Mom Moms. It's located on Orthodox Street, 2551 Orthodox Street. So it's Justina and Kristen from Keller Williams. Hello. <laughs> we are here with our project of promoting a local family owned businesses. We're looking forward to get inside, meet the owner, ask the questions and find out what exactly they're cooking there today. So we're here now with Ryan, the owner. Ryan, please tell us a little bit more about your business. It's, uh, you know, we're going on eight years old now. Uh, I started the business with my business partner, Caitlin, um, eight years ago as a food truck. Uh, and I use that term loosely. It's that it was actually only a food cart. It was four by eight. Well, it still is four by eight. We, we still use it from time to time. We started just by making pierogi at home at first. You know, we were we were roommates at the time, and we were making pierogi. And like we're both Polish American. I'm third generation Polish American. She's second generation. Um, but we love to cook, and we would have friends over, and everybody would eat the pierogi, and then. We had this great idea to open a food truck. We love to cook at home and entertain, and it, uh, it dawned upon us that we should save up and invest in a food truck. So we saved about $20,000. We paid for everything up front and went all in on opening the food truck. Wonderful. So what exactly, what's the kind of menu? What exactly you guys offer? So this is the hot menu right now. We've consolidated the offerings uh, for the time just because it is it is a little bit slower and we really have to control costs. Mm -hmm. uh, so hot, wide, like hot pierogi wise, we make a classic potato pierogi. And then we also make a not so classic Philly cheesesteak pierogi. Every last one of them's hand pinched and uh, people, people love them. They were recently featured on Diners, Drivers and Dives a few weeks ago alongside the very classic guampi. For those who doesn't know what guampi are, they're stuffed cabbage with rice, some great meat, onion, and uh, we can, like Ryan said, put some sour cream on the top, uh, on the top or like rich, creamy tomato sauce. I'm leaving with uh, a lot of them today, uh, <laughs> that's for sure. So, please tell me how the business adapts to a new reality. Uh, it was... It actually got us thinking outside the box a little bit. Uh, re running a restaurant is not the easiest. It's it's hard. Uh, I've heard the analogy: of re having a restaurant is like having a four-year-old that forever stays four years old. You know, you always have to watch it. There's no letting go. There's no walking away. Um, so there there was a silver lining to it. At first, we were we were taken back, and we didn't really know how to adapt. Um, we heavily depend on the food truck too, and all events of you know gatherings of 25 people or more were canceled for the whole year. So we had about 15 weddings that were already some already paid in full. Some you know a lot of them had deposits down. We had over 20 street festivals booked. We had a whole calendar filled for the year of food truck events. So we we didn't know what to do. We were almost going to pull a plug on everything because it was. We're paying rent here. We're opening a new place where we're yeah, paying rent. Yeah, that's my next question about your so, new location. We we had a lot of money going out, and we were kind of struggling to to figure out what was next. Yeah, was um, nice. So we didn't want to just curl up in a ball and cry. Uh, sometimes I did, but it was <laughs> uh, it was a good idea, I think, to start selling packaged food and pierogi and wonky and yes, um, yes. a lot of our sides translate well to things people could cook at home. So we're really lucky to have a product that's A, unique, B, handmade, and C, it's uh, it's storable. Like you could freeze the pierogi, yes. um, so we offer them fresh and frozen. And you know, we, we bought fancy new bags and started selling them by the dozen. So initially we were just doing pickup here at the store for curbside pickup. Uh, people would come to the window and, and order, they could place their order online. Um, and then we started reaching out to farmers markets okay. um, and with much success we were kind of we were making more food than we ever had before because um, we started selling in bulk mm -hmm. we used to just sell at the restaurant yes. orders of five and it wasn't uh, it was we were producing a lot of pierogies but then once we started to sell them by the dozen we would sell on at one farmers market we would sell 2,000 pierogi in a day 
And to make 2,000 pierogi, it doesn't it doesn't happen quickly. Yeah, uh, guys, so for those of you that are not very familiar with pierogies, this dish is extremely time-consuming dish to make like around 200 pierogies that my family can eat in two days, swear yeah. God. Uh, it takes you four, even five hours. So you have to make dough, filling, put them all together. It, it's, it's, it's a delicious, delicious dish, but definitely time consuming. It's a labor of love. <laughs> you know, it, uh, there's a lot of hours standing around the table pinching pierogies. Yes. So the conversations range and, you know, the best jokes come out. Yes, and it's, yes, it's, yes. it's a lot of fun. So our last day here at this location is going to be December 24th. Oh. So our lease is up. They're going to be knocking down this part of the restaurant mm -hmm. and turning it into a bigger kitchen. Okay. Um, and renting it out to new tenants. Um, and we're moving to the Frankfurt Arsenal. Frankfurt Arsenal. So right on uh, Taconi Street. Taconi Street. Like okay. Taconi and Bridge. So about five minutes from here. It's going to have an outdoor space. Um, there's going to be going to have be able to have festivals there and beer festivals oh, and uh, and host weddings and December 24th is going to be our last day here we'll be transitioning over there it's called the Frankfurt Arsenal so it's an old military building it's beautiful oh um, my gosh guys we are have to check it out dad yeah oh. you have to have a party there <laughs> bring, bring the office down um, it's gonna there will be a liquor license there, so there's going to be a bar and everything too. You guys were also thinking about another location somewhere in the South Philly, am I correct? We still, yeah, we still are. It's um, it's underway. It's been a tough year dealing remotely with uh, with the city. Our location's at 1505 South Street, so, so 15th and South. Uh, 15 and South. It's right. going to be just a little takeout window. It's nobody's going to come inside. Okay. Just the street side takeout. Uh, a streamlined menu, quick service, um, and we're partnering up with the bar that's next door called Bob and Barbers, okay. which has been there since like the 70s. It's an amazing dive bar. It, it's a it's a hub of culture in the city, and uh, we'll be offering our food inside their bar as well to be able to sit down and eat there. Ryan, do you guys sell the gift certificate for someone who's still shopping for Christmas gifts? You can get a great gift certificate for your loved one who loves Polish food. I'm sure they're going to be extremely happy. Of course. Um, you can visit the website. It's mamamnomnom.com. <laughs> it's a mouthful. If you just search mamoms, it'll come up. Um, you can purchase gift cards on the website. There's a, a, a tab under the toolbar at the very top of the website that says okay. gift cards. Great. Uh, they're digital gift cards, so you can just download it and print it out. Um, it can be used online on our online store, you can use it at our food truck, you can use it at our new location when we open it. Ryan just mentioned where exactly we can purchase the gift certificates from. Alright. Yeah, try spelling that to somebody over the phone. I'm going between pierogies and Gomskis. I still cannot decide. I think I'll I'm gonna you, go I'll with both of them. <laughs> you know, they had their bakery on Melrose Street. And that Melrose Street got taken down when they put Aramingo Ave in. Mm -hmm. So that, that block of Melrose no longer exists. Um, but they had a Polish-American bakery there for, for about 15 years. Um, Caitlin's grandmother, my mom, she's 97 years old. She'll be 98 in uh, February. So it's, it's named after her. Guys, let's go in the back and see how the pierogi are being made. <laughs> Guys, literally, those are the best pierogies I have for a very long time. I think they're they same like my grandma used to do. Very delicate. It's made perfect. Right, like this this place is such a little hidden gem on this street here in Bridesburg. And, you know, just the little sign out front makes you want to stop in, come check it out. It's definitely not on a main road. You have to know about it. You have to want to search for it. It's totally worth it. You know, you will not be disappointed. For those of you guys that think Polish food is kind of heavy, you're going to change your mind after eating those pierogies because they are so fluffy and so delicate and full of flavor. Um, yeah, you basically have to really try them. Some people say pierogies are... Fake raviolis. We 
we Polish people don't like this comparison because <laughs> raviolis are raviolis and pierogies are pierogies. There are nothing really similar about those two. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Okay. <laughs> this is a major difference here. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all the great information about your business with us. And we look forward to seeing you in the new location. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by, guys.